Hey everybody, welcome to today's episode of Cheap Shots, five inexpensive macro options. In our photography journey, many of us discover macro and fall in love with the surreal perspective it provides. For some of us, this happens sooner rather than later, but just about every photographer I know has taken some macro shots at one point or another. There are a lot of practical applications for macro. Think wedding ring photos, think product shots or food photography. And there's a lot you could learn about color and composition from macro shots. But the big question is, do you have to spend a lot of money to take great macro shots? You certainly could. The native Sony FE 90mm f2.8 is over $1,000, and there are specialized lenses that cost much more. Vintage lenses, lenses offer a superb assortment of macro options, and though typically cheaper than modern equivalents, they can still cost hundreds of dollars. But bargains do exist. Did I ever tell you about the worst macro lens I ever used? It was great. If you find a great deal on a macro lens in your travels, I don't care what the manufacturer is or what the brand is. If it gets down to one-to-one -to -one representation or one-to-two, buy it. All of these lenses perform amazingly well. I'd be less worried about whether a, a Nikon is better than a Canon or whether a Pentax is better than a Minolta. If you find a good one, grab it, adapt it, and use it. My first macro was actually a Lester A. Dine dental lens, a 105 2.8, uh, that focused extremely close and was sharp, but it was also had a really sweet rendering for portraits. I sold it after picking up an autofocus uh, vintage Sigma 105, not the DG version. It was sharp and it had the benefit of being autofocus. And for macro, autofocus provides little benefit, but if you're using a lens in day-to-day -day use, dedicated macros are really tough because they have an enormous throw. Throw means the amount of twisting that you need to do to get the focus ring to lock into a subject. It really lets you do precise focusing, which is awesome for macro, but it's not really practical for things like moving objects. So what do you do while you're waiting to find that perfect condition uh, lens? Maybe a Lester Dine, maybe a Chiron 105, maybe the legendary Bokina 90mm 2.5, or even a more modern autofocus lens. Until that perfect macro comes along in your shopping travels, there are a few options. First, Buy a lens that gets down to one to two or one to three or one to four. There are some amazing options out there in this category. Some even have their own proprietary tubes or filters that let them get to the 1.1 ratio. That is true macro. Many are 50s, 55, 60 millimeters, and at that focal length, they become a great all-around lens option if you don't need a super fast lens that gets down to, say, 1.4 um, for low-light shooting. Other good options include telephoto zooms. A lot of recent 7300s, for instance, can take really great macro shots. Or if you're lucky enough to find a vintage Vivitar Series 1 70 to 210, or uh, even a Tokina 35 to 200, um, you can take some really fantastic shots. Amazing things out there. Vivitar makes a close focusing 128, uh, I'm sorry, 125. That is a really, really great lens. In my stable, I keep a Pentax 50mm f4. Not only is this lens smooth and sharp, but it's tiny compared to other macros, and doubles as a great day-to-day -day lens on my K1000. I can even adapt it to APS-C or full frame. It's nice and small, and it fits great on both. Other manufacturers have similar lenses in 2.8 or 3.5, uh, and I enjoyed using a micro Nikkor I picked up once for 15 bucks at a flea market. It was filthy, but it cleaned up really well and took amazing photos. All the major manufacturers, Minolta, Canon, Olympus, they all made these gems. Even some of the third par parties made some great ones too. Look for Pangor or Vivitar. Uh, any macro lens it will be a great lens for you. My next pick after a one to two ratio lens would be getting a set of extension tubes. You could use these with whatever mount you use in your current lenses if you're shooting vintage, which is great for macro. Since they offer both a cheap solution and excellent manual focus, just get tubes that match your lens mount. Mount your lens to the tube and then mount the tube to your adapter. It's that easy.
The reason I like tubes is simple. You get you get to greatly reduce your close focusing capabilities. Uh, it's inexpensive. It doesn't add any optical elements, which could degrade the quality of your photo. And personally, I own Nikon as well as uh, M42 because those are the predominant uh, types of lens mounts that I use in my lens collection. In fact, I even have a bellows in M42, which is pretty wild. It works just like extension tubes, except you twist the knob and it extends the bellows uh, more or less. And uh, it's really pretty cool. Close-up filters are a good option for some. You'll sometimes see them in sets with a leather pouch. On the side of the lens, you'll see a plus one, plus two, plus three, plus four. The greater the number, the closer you can fo focus. Will they degrade your image? Maybe a little. Will you be able to notice? Maybe not. It's a is a dedicated setup necessary for macro? Well, you could always try a cheaper solution like one of these. You may find that the difference in the optical quality isn't that big of a deal. Another really cool option that is really, really inexpensive is a reversing ring. For 10, 15 bucks, you could screw on a lens backwards and enter the world of really high quality macro. Remember, when going this route, the wider your lens, the more magnification. It's kind of the opposite of when you're not reversing it. So while 50 gives you pretty much a close to one to one ratio rep reproduction, a wide angle like a 35 or 28 can get you even closer. There are some downsides. You can focus by moving closer and farther to the subject, but your uh, focus uh, turning really won't make that big of a difference. If you're a Nikon shooter, you might want to buy a 52 millimeter focus ring because most of your vintage Nikors will fit. If you shoot Pentax, Olympus, Minolta, 49 millimeters might make more sense for you. Check to see what you have. Choose accordingly. You're going to be surprised at how good the results turn out. You know what else you could do? You could just take a shot and crop it. Yep, that's right. That's an option too. Now let's take a look at all of these different ways of taking macro shots in action. Now let's jump into Lightroom for a little bit of pixel peeping. First up, let's take a look at the extension tubes on the left and the reverse ring on the right. In this case, I'm using the Meyer Optic Orsten 50mm f1.8 on the tubes. Love how that lens renders. Both of these options get you really, really sharp images. Both the extension tube on the left as well as on the right side, we have uh, the reverse ring. Again, it's hard to focus that reverse ring. You've got to really, really move in. You can't use your, your actual focus but you can get some really great results. Here, let's look at two inexpensive vintage macros, the Pentax 50 millimeter F4 at F11 on the left and the Tamron 90 millimeter F2.5 uh, F, F, at F11 on the right. The Tamron shows a lot more depth of field because you have to go back in order to get a similar rendering because the focal length is increased. Now let's look at the dedicated macro on the left against another 50 millimeter that just has a plus three magnification filter on it. Surprisingly, you do get a different look and feel to the rendering altogether, but I don't see a ton of loss in terms of sharpness. Take a look at what a dedicated macro looks like compared to just a standard lens that you've cropped in Lightroom. Yeah. 
Now let's look at a lens cropped versus the same lens using the magnification filter. Interesting. So what did we learn today? Well, I learned that you could get a very similar look, very similar shot using a bunch of different methods. I learned that I get some pretty darn good results without spending a lot of money. Solutions that are 15 bucks, 10, 15 dollars uh, can really give you some interesting results. At least let you learn whether or not you like macro and provide an option if you're just gonna take one or two shots. So how about you? Are you going to be interested and willing to take some shots uh, using a reversal ring or uh, a magnification filter or some extension tubes? Why not? If you're looking for a cheap way to shoot macro, these are some excellent options. And there could be some others. Talk about it. Tell us, what do you use? Let us know in your comments. Thanks for watching today's episode of Cheap Shots. If you enjoyed it, Please like us, please follow us, and please share. We would love to hear more of your thoughts. Now get out there and go shoot.